SketchUp 2026 is here. And to be honest with you, I don't even know how we are here already. I feel like just yesterday we were talking about SketchUp 2024 and now we are already in 2026. Like what? Anyway, guys, we're going to talk about everything that SketchUp 2024 has to... I'm still in 2024, I'm telling you. <laughs> we're going to talk about everything that SketchUp 2026 has to offer for you. And I have to tell you, I have mixed feelings about this release. Uh, I don't know whether I love it or I hate it or I'm sad or I'm happy. It's like all of these feelings mixed all at once, but you will see it for yourself after you finish watching this video. Please watch it all the way till the end to know what's happening with the newest release of SketchUp. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. This video is brought to you by the complete SketchUp course for designers. Thinking about learning SketchUp the right and the easy way? Have you been using SketchUp for a while, but you are tired of crashes, slow models and lagging? Or maybe you're just a complete beginner who wants to become a pro. This is the most detailed expert SketchUp course on the market with over 50 pre-recorded lessons, a furniture library of more than 100 items, detailed instruction sheets, lifetime access, a private support group and so many more resources to help you master SketchUp and successfully present your interior design vision to land jobs and win real design clients. Want to learn more? Click the first link down below and I will see you inside. And for just a few days, the course is 50% off. I only do this once a year, so you want to make sure you do not miss that. With that said, let's get started on the newest updates for SketchUp 2026. Okay, before anything else, if you do not know how to download SketchUp 2026, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So what you wanna do is you wanna open a new file like always, and then you wanna go to help, and then on check for update, you wanna click on that. So if you have not downloaded SketchUp 2026, it's gonna be there so you can update it, and basically it's gonna take you to Trimble Connect, and then you will be able to download the latest version. And I wanna say one thing. So every time that you download a new version of SketchUp, it's gonna actually download as a new icon on your computer, so it's gonna be a new app. So SketchUp 2025 is still gonna be there, but now you're gonna have SketchUp 2026 on your desktop. So it's not gonna be the same. A lot of people get confused about this. And to be honest with you, I still have SketchUp 2025 because I wasn't really sure if SketchUp 2026 was gonna be good enough or if they were gonna have like some problems. So I still keep both of them, but just know that it's just gonna download as a new app on your desktop. I wanna just give you a bit of a uh, overview of what we're gonna be going through today. So there are new tools for collaboration. There's also new improvements on faster and smoother models here in SketchUp. Also, there have been some improvements to existing tools and AI. So yes, we're talking about diffusion AI. So let's just start exploring all of that. So the first thing, and I think one of the biggest changes that SketchUp has done in the latest release is that now you have certain collaboration features, which are very exciting because now you can share your model with your coworkers, with clients, with stakeholders, with builders, architects, and they will be able to access your model, to view your model, to comment on your model. And every change that you make is going to be updated instantly live. So everyone can be in the same page. And this is huge when you are on a project and you want to make sure that the design process is as smooth as it can be and that everyone is updated on the changes that are happening uh, with the design. So let me show you how you access the collaboration features here on SketchUp. So you will notice that on your uh, basic toolbar, which is here at the top, and if you cannot see it, you want to go to view toolbars and you want to make sure that the getting started toolbar is active. So it is checked. Now you want to close that off. And then here you can see that you have a new add comment um, icon, which is a new tool. So if you click on that, if you've never done that before, it's gonna ask you if this model can be uploaded to Trimble Connect. Because in order to do this, you need to have a Wi-Fi connection. So I wanna just click anywhere where I wanna add a comment for this project. So let's say that we are deciding the countertop for this bathroom vanity. So I'm just gonna add a comment here. So I'm gonna click there. And then it's gonna ask you if you wanna save this model to the cloud to share and comment. So this is basically gonna save this model to Trimble Connect, to share it with others and receive comments in context, right, with your model. So exactly what I was talking to you about. So we're just gonna save that. And now it's gonna open Trimble Connect and probably you already have a project folder here. If not, you can just create one. 
I normally have one for residential, the other for commercial, and I'm just gonna save it there just for now. So now your file is saved to Trimble Connect and Trimble Connect is this cloud where you can access your files from if you are on the web or even if you open SketchUp for iPad. So it is great to have your files up in the cloud if you wanna share it with anyone or if you wanna open it directly from your iPad as well. So now that you have it there, Basically, you can add comments to the file, I mean, to the model, quite literally, and to specific locations. So if we click here, and then I can just here add a comment. So let's say I add something like, mm, maybe try using a different stone color. I don't know. And maybe I can even add an emoji, like something that is, maybe I don't like this one. And I'm just gonna post it here and it's basically going to um, add that comment. So you can see it right there, that is me, and I just posted that uh, today at 6.45 p.m. So it even tells you the date and the time that you posted this. And basically, uh, if you click here on uh, this three dots, you can mark it as unread, as resolved. So if you already had a conversation with the clients or with the architect or with whoever, and this has been resolved, you moved on, then you can mark it as resolved, or you can even delete the conversation. But let's say that I just wanna leave it like that. And maybe I wanna add another comment. So to do that, I click here on this little icon again, and it is asking you to click an object to place a comment. So this is super important because if you wanna comment on something inside of your model, you of course wanna make sure that whoever is gonna view this is gonna understand what are you talking about. So adding these comments on specific places, entities, or faces on your model ensures that any design conversations that are taking place where you're talking about you know, certain items or certain features of your design is all with context. Everybody knows what exactly you are talking about and it's really hard to get confused. So it is great. So let's say we wanna comment here on the floor. So we're just gonna click on the floor and then I wanna add a new comment. Love this flooring, let's keep it. I do love it though, let's keep it and I'm gonna post that comment. And now it's gonna add it here under the other comment that I have. Now, this is the comment box and I can close that off, but let's say that I've made a couple comments here and now I wanna share it for others to see it. So I can click here on share. So here you have to specify that whoever is gonna access this link, it's gonna be able to view either only the scenes or the entire model or they will not have access. So you can decide uh, what's visible on their end. So I'm just gonna click on view model and then it's giving you a message that says access updated. If you click here on share settings, it's telling you what's exactly gonna do. So collaborators see real time updates. So that is great. And now you can just copy the link. Um, and now this link you can share it with someone directly or you can also here add an email of someone, whether that would be a client or a coworker or your boss or the architect or the plumber, whoever, quite literally, and then, or your cousin, and then they will get an email and they will be able to see that model live. And they will also be able to see all of those comments. So it's super, super cool. I highly, highly, highly recommend you to give this a try. This new tool is a game changer. And I feel like we were waiting for this for such a long time. So now that it is available to us, I think we should use it. Okay, so moving on, what else is available on the newest release of SketchUp? This is probably the thing that makes me the happiest out of all the features that are new, and I will tell you why. So now uh, SketchUp, what it's doing, or what it did so that we are now able to have smoother and faster modeling is that they change a lot of things in the back end. So of course that we cannot see those things because they are changes that they were making, you know, with the actual um, hardware or software. But when you download SketchUp 2026, you will probably notice that there are gonna be less crashes, less slow models, less lagging, less troubleshooting, less bug splats, and all of those nightmares that we have been living with inside of SketchUp. And if you ever experienced any of this, you know that it is an absolute nightmare every time that your file crashes, apparently out of nowhere, but I have to tell you, it's not out of nowhere. It's because your model is not optimized. 
And in my SketchUp course, I actually teach students how to make optimized models so that these things do not happen to them. So let me give you an example and I'll tell you why I'm super happy about this new update. So before in the past, every time that you bring anything to your model, let's say a chair or a table or anything from 3D Warehouse, and you bring that to your model, but let's say that you change your mind and you no longer want that table, so you delete it from the model. Those materials of that table would stay on the materials tab and they will live there forever. So every time that you brought in new furniture, even if you get rid of that furniture, SketchUp was not getting rid of those materials. So that was insane. And I would always tell my students to actually go and delete all the materials one by one, because actually you could not do that by selecting them all and deleting them all at once. It had to be one by one. So imagine what a nightmare. And then my students would complain with me and I would tell them like, okay, if you don't wanna be doing this, then think twice before you import anything into your model from 3D Warehouse. So in my course, I'm always very strict about the things that you should be doing and the things that you should not be doing in SketchUp to avoid these problems. Now, SketchUp is helping me, is helping me make this easier for everybody. And I really appreciate it. So now in the new release if you bring an object from 3d warehouse and then you change your mind you delete it that material is gonna get deleted from your material step so it's already gonna do it for you and every time that you close your file it's gonna ask you if you want to purge it you probably have seen that message and you're always gonna have to say yes because otherwise those materials are gonna be living there. And that data is what is actually making your model very, very slow. So I'm super happy for that. Everybody should be happy for that. I mean, we cannot see those changes as in like a literal tool, but we will be able to feel them because they are gonna make our models way faster and way smoother. And you know that I am obsessed with efficient workflows here in SketchUp. So that's definitely something that's gonna help us get there. But talking about efficient workflows, if you really wanna take your SketchUp learning seriously, for once and for all, I invite you to join the complete SketchUp course for interior designers. It is a course that I have created with over 50 lessons in which I teach you SketchUp from zero all the way to 100. So no matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced level user, you're gonna learn SketchUp the right way. And probably you're gonna have to relearn some things that you have probably been doing wrong for the longest time. In my course, I have a system called the SketchUp Smart System, and it is a set of strategies and workflows that allow you to have a model that is efficient, that is fast, that is not lagging every single time. And if you're asking if what you need to do is get a new computer that can handle SketchUp, that is not the answer. You do not need an expensive computer to run SketchUp. What you need is to have the correct workflows and strategies to keep a model organized, light, and basically hassle-free, which is exactly what I teach in my course. Moreover, if you join us, I will be sharing with you my personal library of items that are proven to not make your model slow. So it is over a hundred items that are in my library that I will share with you. Plus, I will also teach SketchUp on iPad and you will have lifetime access to the course, which means that you can always come back to the lessons and watch them again and again. And you will also have support from me. If you ever get stuck, you can contact me directly and we can sort it out together. So it is insane the amount of resources of help that you have from me inside of the course. And, and it's just pretty insane, like this should be illegal. But wait, there is even more. If you join us now, you can get the course half off, so 50% off, and you will get all of these videos, resources, lessons, instruction sheets, library of materials, so much more at half the price, but only for a few days. So if you're watching this before December 3rd, then you probably want to get that deal. So anyway, let's go back to the tutorial. Okay, so what's next here on SketchUp 2026? So you know how you have your scenes at the very top? And for those who do not know, scenes are specific places that you set up in your model so that you can move from one place to the other very quickly. So let me show you. Right now I have a few scenes here. So if I click on one of them, it's gonna take me to a certain location of my model. And it's also gonna apply a certain style. If you change the style of the line work or how the shadows look, or if you have the sun on or off, you can save those settings to your scene. So if I click on the shower, it's gonna bring me to a different location. 
the vanity and this is more like a zoom in on the vanity. We also have a top view and we also have an axonometric view. So these are scenes, but sometimes what happens is that we update the wrong scene. So we do all of our changes and then we update it and then we realize that we updated the wrong one. Yes, it's happened. Yes, probably many times. But now you can undo that action just by undoing it on SketchUp, like Control Z, and it's gonna get rid of those changes that you had made. So before, every time that you made a mistake and updated the wrong scene, there was no going back, like that's it, like you are screwed. But now you can actually undo that action and go back and basically undo your mistake. So it's pretty cool. Along with that, every time that you go from one scene to the other, those transitions are way faster. If you already have the new SketchUp, you probably already notice it. But before it would take like a few seconds from you to go from one scene to the other and it would like lag a little bit. Now that is gone. So really happy about that as well. Okay, so the next tool that we're gonna be seeing an improvement on is the Zoom Extends. So you have probably used this tool and we use it whenever we wanna see everything that it is contained in our model. Probably we get lost in the um, interface, in the space, in the model, and we just wanna go directly to all of our geometry. So the tool is here and it's gonna take us to a airplane view of our model. So that is now happening faster than before. Before it would lag a little bit, but now it is supposed to be faster. So that's another thing that we really appreciate that they did. The next feature that we're gonna be seeing improvements on are the ambient occlusion features. So if you actually uh, go to your styles, you will be able to activate uh, the ambient occlusion, which are these shadows that you can turn on on your model. But right now you see that I cannot really edit mine. So to fix that, you might wanna go to window preferences and then on graphics, you wanna change it to use new graphics engine. And then you wanna click that on. And then it's gonna tell you that you need to restart your SketchUp. So I will do that right now. So I have now opened my file again. And if I go to the styles toolbar under edit, under the face settings, now you will be able to edit and to activate the ambient occlusion. So if I turn that on, you can see how now I have the shadows that are behind my lines or my edges, how we call them here in SketchUp. And this really gives the model a lot of depth. So it is a really nice feature. Um, however, now you can actually select the color of the shadow. Before you could only choose black, so you didn't really have any flexibility on how your shadows uh, would appear, but now you can actually change the color to anything that you want. So if you click on use color picker, you can just click here on the black and then you can actually modify that here on the color wheel. Probably I would choose like something not very crazy. But anyway, it is there if you wanna play with that as well. And finally, the scale tool. So if you activate the scale tool, you can do that by clicking on S. Before, what would happen is that if you have any geometry that is blocking the uh, object that you wanna scale, you are not able to see those little grips. So that is something that I do appreciate a lot because sometimes you just wanna scale things up and down. And if you have a lot of geometry, walls, doors, anything, you are not able to do that. So it would take you a little longer. So those are the things that are basically major changes here on SketchUp 2026. Let me know if you liked these new features, if you are gonna be using them, if you wish that they had something else. I'm really happy because now I our SketchUp model is supposed to be a bit more efficient and the whole workflow is gonna improve overall. But the one thing that I wish they did is just have more new tools. Like for example, the latest version of last year that they uh, implemented the PBR materials and all of that. And I do have a video of the SketchUp 2025 updates. I will leave it down below if, if you're interested. And I will also leave the details to my complete SketchUp course for interior designers. So you're welcome to join us there. So that is it for this video. Let me know again, what do you think in the comments about SketchUp 2026? I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.